the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's going to be a beautiful day that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Well, as you can see, we've got a cold, cold winter day. But you know, these are the kind of days that I do some of my best at catching bass. Our water temperature right here is 46 degrees. Uh, a predicted weather forecast is a high of about 38 today. Uh, the pattern that we've established today is about eight to 10 feet along Quick bank drops is where most of these fish are located. Uh, we'll talk about our presentation and the bait that we'll be using a little bit later on. But a chilly day, a good winter day for nothing else to do. I don't hunt. I do hunt, but I hunt bass. <laughs> so while the rest of these guys are out duck hunting and deer hunting, I'm going to be easing along these shorelines trying to catch some bass. And what our show is going to be devoted to are to those fishermen who are having fits who are all tied up, confused, interested in facts, wondering about this and that, and that and this. And I've got a bunch of questions they want answered. So why ask questions? Well, it's how we learn. It's just that simple. If you want to find out something, a great way of going about it is ask about it, like this one right here. What are the advantages of polarized fishing glasses? All flat surfaces, such as the surface of the water, reflect light and produce glare. Glare is to your eyes as static is to your ears. Polarized lenses eliminate nearly all the glare produced by horizontal surfaces, so the vision is improved. Glare from the water surface will form a wall against your vision, penetrating what's below the surface. Eliminate the glare and you can see below the surface. Of course, how deep you can see below the surface is determined by the clarity of the water. And with that said, let's see if we can go and fool some of these chili water bass, okay? Where are you going? And that cold water. Whoa. Turn around here. Ooh, the bait just fell out. Pretty fat little smoky fish. Okay, here's one about spinner baits. Bill, I've noticed you fish a lot of willow bladed spinner baits with silver blades. Why silver? Okay, I'll answer that in just a second. But first, let me just say, there are plenty of times when the conditions call for a Colorado or an Indiana blade. And believe me, they both have their place. Spinners on spinner baits are important. They not only help hold the bait up in the water column and allow it to swim, but they vibrate and create a tremendous amount of reflection. Willow blades now spin faster than the other two blades mentioned and have less water resistance and can be worked much deeper and at a longer distance with less effort. When they're spinning underwater, bass see an oblong flashing three-dimensional shape that looks like a live shiner or shed cruising along. Now, the reason I like silver, silver is much more visible at a greater distance than gold or uh, say the rainbow colors or say colored blades. I've just got a lot of confidence in silver because they flash so much better. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly.
Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. Isn't that a pretty bite? You like the looks of it? Huh? Alrighty, here's one all fishermen dread. After a front moves through, what factors determine when the fishing will return to normal? Fish, like most critters, crave stability. It makes them feel more secure. So, stable conditions are what cause fish to return to a more predictable routine. Now, after a sudden change in barometric pressure, has sent fish into a panic mode, they need assurance and a return to comfort. Normally this comes by way of a couple of days of stable weather. Watch that barometer closely. By the way, a slowly rising barometer is best and a fast falling barometer can be doggone good. An extremely high barometer most often translates to poor fishing. Also note that fish that traditionally remain in deep water are not nearly as affected by such changes as those that relate to shallow water. Oh boy. Where are we going today, my friend? Cold old fish. Whoa, there we go. Got over a log, let me come on back here. Slide you over that log. Pretty fish. Easy. Fat. Ta-ta. Let you lay on that log. There he goes. Okay, here's one about trolling motors. Bill, does anyone make a quick release mounting plate for traditional foot control trolling motors? I've seen them for electric steer motors but not for foot control motors. Yep, Motor Guide just came out with one that works for both electric steer and mechanical steer foot control trolling motors. And it can be changed out quicker than a minnow can jump a dipper. <laughs> Seriously, you can change out a motor in less than a minute. Oh, look at there. There you go. <laughs> Pretty fish. Fat. There it is. Nice. See ya. Woo! Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination. And Tracker Boats. Fish the finest. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, 
because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Today's show is sponsored in part by Stren, the standard of dependability since 1958. Fish defunct, kill the stink, and Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Okay, let me show you what we're doing. We're fishing along these eight to 10 foot contours. And when, sometimes the contours will run out 30, 40 yards off of the bank. Now, I'm way out here right now, and when I get way out, I lose a lot of the cover, but there is some sparse cover out where the 10 foot drops off into about 15, 16, 17 feet of water. And when I get out here where the sparse cover is, what I'll go to is a lead head. I can fish this lead head so much better. And I've got the bait rig, like I say, with a quarter ounce lead head. And when I get back in the heavier cover, what I'll go to is a 3 16th ounce slip sinker. So I've got it pegged with a 3 16th ounce slip sinker and I've got the crack crawl rigged with a 4 alt Gamakatsu wide gap EWG uh, hook. So this particular bait is a Bass Pro Shop crack crawl and we're using the uh, four and a half inch size but you can rig this thing so many different ways on so many different rigs but works exceptionally well particular equipment we're using we're using 14 pound test strand original clear blue it's a fluorescent line got it rigged on a six and a half foot smoke quantum rod and a little 100 series smoke reel. It's a fast action rod, it's got sensitive tip, a tremendous amount of backbones. Ideal for this type of fishing. Let's fish right there. Why are you gonna go with that thing? Make me come all the way back here, aren't you? Tugging, tugging, tugging. Pretty fish. Easy. Now here's a neat question about spinnerbait blades. Can you explain to me why do spinnerbaits have different styles of blades? Well, I'll try. Spinners on these blades are important and each blade style is designed for a specific purpose and react differently. With lures of this type, you'll find that they're usually manufactured with three different shaped blades, the Colorado, the Willow Leaf, and the Indiana. All turn at different angles to the shaft because of their shape. Shape determines blade angle, which determines RPMs. This determines the performance or vibration and action of each blade. The Colorado blade turns at about a 45 degree angle to the shaft. It creates more water resistance for slower revolutions that create a distinct thump. But the 45 degree angle revolution also reduces the amount of flash given off. Nevertheless, they're a good dirty water blade and a low light blade. Now the willow blade falls on the opposite end of the performance spectrum because it revolves at about a 20 degree angle. They produce the most flash but need to move at higher retrieve speeds in order to spin consistently because they have minimum water resistance. And finally, the Indiana blade. 
It falls somewhere between the Colorado and Willow Leaf in performance with about a 30 degree blade angle that provides moderate action, flash, and vibration. This one is more of a compromised blade. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. Why are eddies good places to fish? Why? Well, eddies are formed by a current break that creates slack to slow water and move horizontally. They're the home to many small fish simply because they provide a survival location and attract the basic form of the food chain. Now game fish know this and they use eddy water as one of their top feeding locations. Now keep in mind that all eddies are not going to be productive. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning is provided by Bill Dance Digital. Follow us. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter, sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. You know there's a major advantage to having a bow-mounted transducer on your trolling motor and having a bow-mounted graft in the front of your boat. This way you'll always know exactly what depth is beneath you. Take this 19-foot boat. It's got a graft mounted at the console with a transducer at the transom. But that's a long distance when you're trying to find fish or vertical fish on a ledge or a piece of cover. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Stay out of that cover. Ooh. Good fish. Nice one. Let me just get my hands on you, big boy. Yes. Ooh, that dandy. There's that sunshine. That's pretty. Get that sun on you too, ain't you? Hmm. Okay, how about this one? You've already left home for a day of fishing. What one item would you turn around and go back and get? And why that particular item? Oh, I've had to turn around and go back home uh, and get a lot of things I needed for a day of fishing. Heck, I've even had to go back and uh, get my boat that I forgot. Yep, that's right, I forgot my boat. And I forgot my tackle box. And having a very understanding better half, I had to call, I had to call her one time and ask if she wouldn't mind bringing me my tackle box. She did it, and there's no doubt that, uh, she, you know, she is a real keeper. And if you knew her, you'd probably, you know, agree. My number one thing I'd go back for are my prescription sunglasses. All that said, I can already hear y'all spreading the word. Did y'all know that Bill Nance went fishing one time and forgot his boat? Well, it's true. Bill, I'm looking for a couple of open face spinning rods for my two twin grandsons. They enjoy wade fishing the small creeks here in North Alabama and Southern Tennessee. You got any suggestions? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've got the perfect thing for you at a good price. I too enjoy wade fishing and let me show you an ideal rod and reel that'll work just fine for your two grandboys. It's one of our Bill Dance Special Edition 
six foot or six and a half foot rods. These rods are constructed with IM6 graphite that create sensitivity and light weight. They're strong with plenty of backbone for a good hook set. They come with D-ring guides and EVA handles, an ideal rod for fishing small jigs, crankbaits, inline spinners, and finesse lures. Now the reels are lightweight affairs with smooth drag systems, optional left or right hand retrieves, large aluminum spool, and continuous anti-reverse. Tell you what you need to do. Check them out at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. fish right there. Come and run out of the boat with it. Yes, sir. Nice fish. If I don't fall out of the boat, coming back here to get him. Tough. Okay. Whoa, baby. Pretty big thing, you. Nice one. You liked that too, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Pretty fish. Gold colored. See you, buddy. Well, we started our show today with questions and we ended it that way. And you already know the only stupid question, right? It's the one you forgot to ask. Thanks for being with us, and until next time, catch one for me. And don't forget, ask questions of yourself and others. You're going to be surprised at what you learn. We'll see you. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.